Hello, sunshine. This is Joy from Michigan in the US, and I am going to attempt a sunflower yet again. I have tried several times and not had the results that I wanted, so we're gonna try again. I'm going to add one new thing, one new color, I should say, to my mix, and that's this Extreme Sheen Pearl. I watch a lot of Fiona art, and she does a lot of flowers like this, and she uses a pearl medium that I can't get here. So I'm not sure if this is similar to what she uses or not, but we're gonna try it. My background is already down, it's a titanium white. It had the tiniest bit of that pearl white in it because I was lazy and used the same cup. So I, I don't think there's enough to even notice, but it, it is there if that impacts the end results. I did wanna show you guys this painting from the other day. This was my double flip cup. And I did notice, especially right there, I had some cracking and right here. Um, as I just wanted to point that out to you, it was too hot in this room for me to be leaving a painting like this to dry, but I left it anyway. So just a tip, you don't want the painting to dry too quickly. What happens is that top layer will dry before the lower layers do and it'll crack because of the moisture underneath trying to escape. So my little tip of the day. And I got that from someone else, I'm sure, but I, I've watched so many videos, I couldn't tell you. I'm going to hit this with some heat just because there's a lot of air bubbles. I'm just going to just bear with me while I eliminate those. All right, quick and easy. All right, so I'm going to do the bottle bottom. I did cut little notches. I don't know if you guys can see that, but there's a little notch in between each of the little divots where the paint will come down so that hopefully the paint will be allowed to flow into the middle so I don't end up with such a blank middle. Now because I want a sunflower I may fill that middle with a darker color anyways but for right now this will work. I I did mix this up really good my pearl color and I went to go add my pouring medium to it and it's already very thin so I'm not adding any medium to this. I'm just using this as is. And I did put a little bit in this custom color. This is crimson plus orange, and it's got just a little bit of sheen from that pearl, which you guys probably, I don't know if you can see that in the video or not, but every other color is just a straight color. So I'm going to start with the pearl. Of course, now it looks kind of thick going on here, but I think it'll be okay. And then we're going to go to crimson. That's not wanting to flow down on those sides. Get that going a little. Hmm. <laughs> Just going to give those two spots a little help. I find it very, very difficult to keep my paint going down each little divot evenly. So we'll see how that works out. So that's crimson, and then I'm going, oh, I almost forgot that I'm going to do my custom crimson plus orange. That looks mostly crimson, but hopefully, hopefully it adds some nice pretty bits. I may skip the crimson on the next one because I can see just the slightest difference, and I kind of like what I'm seeing. So we may just have crimson on the very outside. This is cadmium orange hue. This is my custom goldenrod. I will describe it in the description box if you want to know the exact mix. Uh, let's go with a little more yellow. And then cadmium medium yellow hue. I also used a thinner base. So my background color, I mixed a little bit thinner than what I normally would do. So now I'm gonna go back to that custom mix of the crimson plus orange. And I still, I, mean, I can't remember if it was, let me think, either Barbara or Maureen asked if I had checked my table to see if it's level. I still haven't done that, I've meant to. I just haven't got around to it. With these flowers, that would be an important thing to know because they, you do want them to be somewhat even. I have a feeling this flower is going to go over the edges if I'm not careful. All right. I'm 
going to blow this last bit of yellow off so pardon the back of my head as your view here just to try to get the last of that paint off and it is allowing the notches are allowing the paint to flow in so that's good I'm going to turn it so I can now create petals in between what I already did so you know what? I forgot to put the pearl in that second layer guys okay so let's start with pearl And then my custom crimson and orange mix. And I think I'm just going to do one layer on this one. Oh, darn it. Oh, goodness sakes. Let me just get that with my finger. It'll be quicker and easier. All right, and then if we can just spread the white back over, we'll just pretend that never happened. Perfect. I have had, today, or this week was supposed to be my relaxed, easygoing week, and it's been a frustrating week, so hopefully that doesn't come through in my painting today. All right. I do like the way it's flowing. I feel like that's a good sign. <clears throat> Excuse me. But again, my table has got to be uneven because it's flowing over here much more than over here. <sighs> Gonna have to check that. All right. We'll have an uneven flower yet again, and I will learn my lesson and get this table checked for level and see if we can fix it. All right, I'll mess with my edges later because that's super boring to watch. Okay, well, uh, let's just go for it, guys. I should have mentioned too, this is just an eight by eight inch canvas, just a little baby, so that I can practice this. I didn't figure I needed to pull out a Great big one when I wasn't sure if this was going to work. So. Oh. Bumped myself on that one. And we're going to pull these into the middle. You don't have to do this part. I like the effect it creates and it does pull a little bit of that color into the middle, which I like. I don't want so much white in the middle. All right, guys. Here comes the fun part or the scary part. Depending on how you fix it. Yeah, this whole petal has fallen off the edge. Oh, it irritates me. Cleansing breath. Try not to be irritated. So I just use dry paper towel. Lots of different people use different methods. I find that for me, the dry paper towel works the best. So that's what I use. Some people do wet paper towel. People do cling wrap or saran wrap, whatever you want to call it. I've worked with both dry and wet paper towel and the dry just works much better for me. All right. I do like these colors together. They're looking nice. Get my fiery sunflower, hopefully. Okay, going to turn it maybe. There's so much paint on this table, guys. I decided I could get away with one more painting. It is definitely off center. I'm just gonna, nope. I'm gonna leave it off center because otherwise I'm gonna mess up the effect. So, 
I kind of like that. I don't know that I want to do anything at all to it other than hit it with a little heat maybe. Take that little bit off. All right, I am going to add a little white to my edges. You wouldn't have to do this. There is paint on the canvas. I just don't want it to look bare. I'm going to go ahead and cover up that. And this is not the thin down white, so hopefully this works out okay. Just want to make sure your whole canvas is covered. And then like I said, this room gets very hot. Our, we have a heat wave right now, so we're hitting a heat wave for Michigan. If you're from the south or from some warmer climate, you're going to find this to be kind of funny. My sister always laughs. She lives in North Carolina. I laugh when I say it's hot because our hot is different than a lot of other people's, but we're in the 80s right now. High, mid to high 80s, which is warm for us. But this room, because it's got so many windows, which I love, gets very hot. So I will not leave this out here to dry. I will take it in where we have the AC on and it just stays at a more consistent temp. I don't know that it's the it's just the heat, but probably the, the fluctuation in temperature impacts the way it dries quite a bit. So that's my two cents on that. All right, guys, I don't know that I need to do anything but hit it with heat. Let me know what you think of this one. Pardon my noise while I pop some air bubbles. center flower. I didn't get quite the lacing that Fiona gets, but I think if I had used more pearl, I would have. She gets beautiful lacing, and I think I'm getting just the, the hint of it here. There's like little, it makes a very petal effect. It looks very petalish. So white blob can go away. And you can fiddle with this a bit. You don't want to do too much or you'll end up messing it up. But you know me. I'm going to try not to mess it up. I'm going to try to eliminate just a little bit of that white. Although I think I'm making it worse. Okay, I'm gonna leave it. I'm happy with that. If you've watched my recent videos, you know I have to learn to stop when I'm happy, even if there are parts that I don't like. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right, guys, I will take you in for a close up. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you enjoyed this. This is my art therapy journey, and boy, do I need it today. So I hope this inspires you to pull out some paint and create and use it as your own art therapy. See, I had to fix one more blob. I needed to stop looking at it because I'll find more things that I need to fix. I just can't leave it alone. I just don't like all that white. And I, I prefer to at least do this on camera because I have ruined paintings before off camera and then had to come back on camera and say, oh, sorry. I ruined that one. Okay. My goodness, I just don't like the white in the middle. Maybe I should wait till it's dry and add just a little bit of bronze or copper, a metallic in the middle. If you don't mind finger painting, this is a fun way to do it. Just trying to 
Oh goodness. I said I wasn't going to fiddle with it and look at me guys. I am not sticking to my word. I'm almost there. Almost. <clears throat> All right, really, really and truly this time, I'm done. I won't touch it other than to put it in a different spot to dry. Let me know what you think of this one, guys. I may clean up this edge here. I say that, I'm going to clean up this edge here. The way it flowed over the edge is not cohesive with what's on the front of the canvas. So I'm just going to clean that up. And then I'll go in with my white, which I've spilled a bunch of, so I have plenty, and just fill that back in. All right. I think that's better. I don't love the edge here, but hopefully that'll flow just a little bit. And one last tip before I take you into your close-up. Don't forget to run your finger along the bottom edge here. It helps to pull off the extra paint and keeps it from pulling more paint off the canvas and keeps it from dripping if you have to move it. <laughs> when I move it from this room into the house, I prefer to not find drips of paint all over my floor, especially since I have cats and a dog who will just track it everywhere. All right, guys, <clears throat> excuse me. I'm gonna take you in for your close up. All right, guys, I just couldn't keep my fingers out of it. There was a lot of white right in here and I pulled that into the center. But I really am done now. I keep saying that. You guys are gonna learn not to trust that till you see pictures at the end. All right, I wish we had gotten more of the lacing here, but so this lovely effect right in here is so nice and that would have been nice to have on the outside edges as well. Just a bonus bit for those of you interested. I did pull out a level and my table is slightly uneven, but not enough that I would think that it would cause an issue. There might be a little bit of board warping here. Yeah, cause it's, it's risen, it's higher in the middle, but I think if I put a canvas on there, let's just try this. Sorry, I wasn't prepared to do this with a canvas, but we'll try. And then put the level on that. That's pretty close to level, guys. So I don't know, maybe it's my, maybe it's my bottle bottom. So I'll check that. Just thought I'd share this with you guys. See you on the next one.